was a possible divorce case. My job was to follow a woman and gather evidence on behalf of her husband who believed she was having an affair. As I trod the London streets, rain was starting to fall and the night was as black as a Bible, but not as holy. I watched her slip into a shop. It was an all-night pet shop. Was she having an affair with a pet shop owner? I was kicking my heels, waiting for her to reappear. There was a beggar, badly playing a violin. I nodded down to him and said, what do you know? He answered, you're a wanker. I didn't dignify him with a reply. Instead I just kicked his hat over and left him scrabbling around for the scattered coins. I'm not a man to be trifled with. What could be taking her so long in the pet shop, I wondered. It was no good, I had to go in and see for myself. I entered the shop and was immediately asked by an assistant what I was looking for. Thinking fast, I asked to see his finest budgies. As he led me towards the cages, I spotted her talking to a man behind the counter. I was straining to hear the conversation, but it wasn't easy because of the constant chirping. The who's a pretty boying, and the assistant with me going on and on about plumage. Eventually, I heard her mention the name Bob Martin, and I saw her slide a small packet into her handbag in exchange for an unknown amount of cash. What was this? secret shady purchase, I wondered. And was it a gift for the mysterious Bob Martin? As she turned to leave, the assistant with me asked if I would like to take a close look at a cockbird. Having no desire to witness a feathered ladyboy, I made my excuses and left. I followed her along the wet Soho streets, past sex shops and peep shows, past an all-night emergency cobblers, past a combined tattooist and bakery, and past a large wig and toupee emporium, with a sign in the window that read, finest hair pieces from two pound an hour. Eventually she arrived at a house in a quiet cul-de-sac, and opened the door with a key. As the door swung open, she was greeted by a large dog that jumped up at her, and was clearly excited to see her. She pushed the dog away, and its erection subsided. Then a man in a cravat appeared and they briefly kissed, though not before I snapped them with my camera, gathering evidence that I felt sure would be most incriminating. So it seemed I had discovered her secret lover, either the man in the cravat, or the excited dog, or possibly both. The door closed and I left. When I was back home, I started to review my evidence. It was only then, as I examined the photos I had taken in fine detail, that I realised the man in the cravat was in fact her husband. And it was her dog. And it was her own home. For a brief moment, I felt foolish. Foolish to have made such a basic mistake. But then I remembered there was one person still unaccounted for one missing link in the chain of emotional, twisted bile of deception. Bob Martin. Yes, I still had one lead, and I was just about to sniff out what was on the end of it. <laughs>